And sounding awesome. Okay, let's get it's started. It's a little hard for me to tell. I'm and, asking that um, all of our Zoom attendees. I, mean, I think uh, she is a good worker, you? but I also is think a part of I don't know her. I don't know her that well, but I also you feel part like she's of the, work um, so much. Someone here. Uh, as you have a part of the um, meeting, I will ask you to unmute and participate. So, um, welcome. I'm muted. <laughs> yes. I unmuted you. Okay. We're... Now you're unmuted. Okay. <laughs> I have a technology issue, but, but I, think I think we're good, good now. So, so uh, welcome, welcome to the uh, I'm pleased that we're having uh, our first hybrid meeting. Uh, we have some folks here at the North Botanical Gardens, and we also have folks on the on Zoom. Uh, so, first, I would ask uh, Chuck Spence to unmute and meet us in the Okay, we'll begin with the four-way test. Can we say that it's the truth and fair to all concerned? Will it serve to friendships learn if it's beneficial to and we're sure that we've done our best? Then we'll know that we in Rotary will have met the four-way test. And then the other book flapper, table slapper, whatever, is the grand old flag. If you have your book, it's number 80. You're a grand old flag. You're a high-flying flag. And forever in peace may wave. You're the Hooray. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, and now please Thanks, join Jeff. me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, and now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And now the four-way four test way. of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build good and will and will friendship? And, better friendship? and will it be beneficial, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And will it be fun? Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Uh, and now, uh, uh, and now uh, uh, Jim vacation by Jim Baker. Heavenly Father, as we come together Father, today as Rotarians, as Rotarians, thanks for the good gifts. Thanks for the good gifts that you give. We ask your guidance in our we lives. Your guidance in our lives. We pray that your love will live among us. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for. 
allowing our representative to go over to the uh, blue phone. And we'd also like to thank Jim Pitts for all the hard work that he's doing in keeping this organization over the top. Really roaring along for the past several months. These things we ask in your name. These things we ask in your name. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Um, do we have Joe Massey? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, Joe, anything on a visitation report? I, I have not heard of thing. But I'll open it up to the floor. Yeah. Okay. Does any does anyone know of any Rotarians who could use our assistance? Of guests. I know that Sigur has a couple of guests joining us that were on the trip with her. Uh, so the Jim, you're muted. We've lost you, Jim. All right, I'm back to being unmuted. Um, okay, uh, introduction of guests. If anyone has any guests that they'd like to uh, let us know about, uh, now, now's a good time for that. Okay, thanks. Um, th since this is the first, um, oh, one other thing. Our school of the week uh, is Chesterfield Academy. Um, and we will be uh, presenting, we we're presenting our guests with a, or, or our guest speakers um, with a book to be presented to, uh, to Chesterfield. Um, this is the first, our first meeting of the month. So we have some anniversaries and birthdays to celebrate. Uh, let's do birthdays first. We have Bruce Wilcox on October 8th. We have Carlisle Broughton on October 15th. Bill Davis on October 20th, Bob Healy on the 23rd, Skip Burton on the 27th, Alan Nelson on the, was on the 1st, Jim Sell was also on the 1st, uh, Jerome Adamson was on the 2nd, and Gus Stuhlreier is tomorrow on October 7th. Uh, if you could all join me, Chuck, would you mind leading us in happy birthday? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Rotarians, happy birthday to you. Thanks Chuck. We also have some wedding anniversaries. Uh, we have uh, Will and Cecilia King celebrating 54 years on the 29th. We have on the 24th of October, we actually have two anniversaries, each of, with, each of which are 56 years. We have Ray and Jamie Moses on the 24th and Susan and Alan Dodd also on the 24th, 56 years for each of them. Uh, on the uh, 12th of October, we have Stephen and Rebecca Jones, 24 years. On the uh, 10th of October, we have Johnny and Irene, Blake with 17 years. Um, and me and my wife actually celebrated this past weekend our 34 uh, year anniversary. So congratulations, congratulations to all. Uh, we also have a few, uh, we have some rotary anniversaries. We have uh, Corintha Carey, one year. We have Sally Hartman, 13 years. We have Sharon Lederberg, uh, 14 years. We have Kelly Stefanko, five years, Jeff Wells, 40 years, and Bill Moore, uh, 21 years. 
So um, a couple of things we just want to, uh, for club business that we just want to talk about. First is our next service project is this coming Saturday. Uh, we will be meeting at 10 o'clock at the food bank on Tidewater Drive. Uh, we'll be there from 10 o'clock to one o'clock. I will tell you that the uh, food bank has been a wonderful partner uh, with us um, you know, during this pandemic. Uh, it's an organization that can, that can use our help, that appreciates our help and allows us to do some good works while getting to see fellow Rotarians. So um, you know, my ask of you is that you, you strongly consider um, uh, participating in some of these events. Uh, there is a sign up link on the club webpage. Uh, if you have any questions at all or are having any difficulty, um, feel free to either give myself or Walt Sobic uh, a ring and, and we'll get you signed up. I uh, also wanted to let you know that there is uh, there's a group that is uh, putting together uh, a uh, Bob Latimer hot dog day. So expect a little bit more information on that. Um, it'll be sometime in, um, in December. So that is still in the, in the early planning stages, uh, but just wanted to let you uh, know about that. Uh, one other thing that I'm just going to ask um, Jason Drain to talk to us a little bit about is um, as an alternate fundraiser, uh, there's a, a committee has had a, a couple of meetings and I just wanted to um, have Jason give us a little flavor for, for what that might look like. So Jason, you have the floor. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just to talk a little bit about a fundraiser. So as you know, with uh, the impact that we've had uh, from a COVID perspective uh, and our ability to gather in places, uh, it, it, it definitely affected uh, our two main fundraisers that we normally do, the Suds and Buds and Growl Fest. So we're looking at other alternatives of what we could do um, potentially uh, more of a, in a virtual setting. Um, so we did a little bit of research and reached out to some folks that have had, had really good success with this in the past, and it's an it's a online auction. Um, so we would uh, work to get that scheduled and, and have everything set up for an online auction um, with the drawing coming out uh, sometime in uh, the February timeframe. Uh, we're using a uh, platform. It's an online platform, which is uh, a zero cost to our club. It's called Bidding Owl, like bidding on an item, owl like the bird, biddingowl.com. And uh, um, the only fees associated with that would be a 5% fee of, uh, uh, of any money that we raised um, through this auction. So uh, I know myself, uh, Jim and uh, Jeff, we were meeting and, and kind of coming up with uh, some ideas around some different packages. So one of the things that we would ask is uh, um, anybody that has any items that they would like to donate for the auction or if they have any connections or if they have uh, professional services that they would like to donate for the auction, um, please contact myself, um, Jeff or Jim, and we will uh, get in contact with you and, um, and, and discuss what, what you may have available. Um, we're also uh, gonna be reaching out to uh, other uh, places inside the community to, um, to come up with uh, folks that may wanna donate um, certain items um, that we can auction off. And with that, um, I'll turn it back over to Jim. Okay, thanks a lot, Jason. Uh, there will be a lot more information coming out on that. Uh, I also wanted to just real quickly mention that, um, that the Hartmans are also celebrating their 38th anniversary on October 9th. So um, congratulations. Um, one other thing just wanted to mention on October 24th, uh, there's going to be a polio telethon, a Rotary International polio telethon uh, that's going to be held on that day. I will include more additional information on that um, in my president's message that will come out uh, later this week or, or over the weekend. So October 24th, there's, a, there's an online um, Rotary International telethon for polio. And while we're on the subject of 
polio. This is um, this is polio month for for Rotary. Um, and I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. One is I'd like to raise a little bit of money for uh, polio. And second, I would like to get you guys in the mode of bidding on something. So hold that thought. I'm, I'm auctioning off made by your president uh, and you probably can't see it, but it's a key lime cheesecake personally made and I would like to open the floor to bidding. I will tell you that I have an opening bid from Jeff Wells at $25. So do I have 30? Cy Grandy, $30. Do I have 35? Feel free to chime in from, from Zoom World. I, Cy Grandy just said 50. So it's $50 for the key lime cheesecake. Do I have 55? Yes. Is it from scratch or it, is it a mix? It is from scratch. This is sixty dollars. We have sixty dollars. Do I have sixty-five? Sixty-five. Anyone online? He makes the best cheesecakes in the area. Okay, Cy Grandy just claimed that I make the best cheesecakes in the area. I don't know if that's fair or true, but let's go with it. I'll go seventy. I we have seventy. Seventy dollars. Seven. Do we have seventy-five? 75 from Cy Grandy. Do I have 80? $80. Key lime cheesecake. It doesn't get much better. From scratch. From scratch. We this is to... Gus. I'll go 100. Gus goes 100. <laughs> Gus is, Gus is upping, upping the ante. Love it. Love it. Who wants to compete with Gus? Do I have 105? Do I have 105? $105. The best key lime cheesecake you're ever going to have. Anyone? I'll do it. Who, who is that? Joe Massey? Yeah, 105. Massey, $105. But on one condition. I'll deliver it. No, it's got to be consumed today in that room. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. okay, Michael said that we can make that happen. So we have 105. Who wants it? Who wants to now compete with Judge Joe? Do I have 110? Do I have 110? Anyone? I bet you're not going to get any bids from the floor. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one way to stifle the competition, Joe. I love it. Anyone else in Zoom world? $105. $105 going once. $105 going twice. Joe Massey, sold to you for $105. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Joe, I am, I'm very willing to deliver that to you. No, 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 no. It's got to be eaten by the people there. Okay. All right. We will, we will make that happen. We will make that happen. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, you know, if anyone else during the month, specifically the month of October, uh, because it is um, because it is polio month, if you would like to uh, auction something off uh, for the good of polio, we're, we're happy to entertain that. Just give us a heads up uh, that you would like to do that and we'll make sure we, we have time for you. Um, so um, our vice president in charge of programs is Lori Harrison. And so, Lori, I'm going to give you the floor to uh, to kick off our our, our program. Right? Thank you very much. Oh, oh, sorry. Thank you, Michael. Uh, fines and happy bucks. It goes without saying that if you had a birthday, um, that we we expect either a dollar um, a dollar per year or five dollars. Um, so um, we, we we have the list of you. So. Uh, thank you very much for, for in advance for donating. Um, I would like to um, give some happy bucks for three things. One is I think it's great that we're doing a hybrid meeting. Uh, when I look at the number of people who are either online or here, this is one of, 
this is one of the bigger meetings we've had in a while, and I, I sincerely appreciate that. Um, I also have happy bucks for my 34th anniversary, um, which was this past weekend. And also um, the Army team is now three and one. So, so I, I, I do appreciate that. Um, any other happy bucks that we have? I, uh, President Jim, this is Jason. I, I would uh, I would suggest maybe uh, the folks that are going to partake of that uh, cheesecake in your room uh, have to pay a five dollar plating fee. <laughs> <laughs> so so if, if whoever didn't hear Jason's suggestion was that uh, everyone who partakes of the uh, cheesecake pays a five dollar plating fee. <laughs> I, I think that's fair to all concerned. So, okay, thank you, Jason, appreciate that. And by the way, Jason, for doing that, you also are gonna contribute $5 for turning in your fellow Rotarians, but I appreciate your, your grit. With pleasure. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else with some happy bucks? Michael. So I received a grimy envelope in my box here at work. And inside was a letter, and I'm going to read it. Michael, I'm cleaning out my late parents' house up in Maine. I came across this piece of rotary history that I thought you might find interesting. My father was very active as a club president, two-time Paul Harris fellow and editor, and he was a kid. He told us whether or not you were in a, quote, singing club, but I hope you enjoy this piece of rotary club memorabilia. I think it's the end, but at least you got in. The Rotary Club. It goes back to, I believe, it is 1962. So I sent her a nice thank you note saying, yes, in fact, we are a singing club, and I'm happy that we're a singing club, and I love this little piece of Rotary. That's very cool. Some happy bucks for that. And I'll also share some happy bucks for Joey and Seeger, who joined us on the trip they're going to share today. How wonderful it was to get to know them even more than I already knew them through Rotary. Um, it was a fantastic experience, and I can't wait for all of us to get to travel again. So, with that, that's my happy bucks. Okay, thank you. So, if if you could, could you hear what Michael was saying online? Okay, Michael was giving happy bucks. Um, he had a friend from, basically, a family friend who had uncovered while going through some of their parents' artifacts, they found a 1966 Rotary songbook. And she was nice enough to send it to him. So now we have, we have something to compare our current songbook to. Um, yes. I think I know the person that donated it. Yes. And if it's who I think it is, I'll contribute $5. Okay, so. I do. Yep, Sue Bragg, who's a horticulturalist here at the garden. Cleaning out her dad's house in Maine, came across it. Okay. And I'll leave it here for Okay. So Sigur added $5 to it because Sigur knows the person who donated it to us. So that's great. Um, anyone else? I'll All give right. happy bucks for a great trip up to see my son's new house up in Alexandria a few weeks ago. Great trip. That, that's wonderful. Who, who, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Tom no. Oh, Tom. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will give 10 happy bucks. I think I owe some from the past too. So I'm going to write a big check. This is Marty. Um, my son closed on his house on Wednesday and he's moving back to Norfolk. Oh, wonderful. That's wonderful. And did I see anyone else? Irene O'Brien? Yes, we uh, just got a new addition to our family, a right now 14 month old puppy. So um, I'll be donating some happy butts for what I might regret. I did not realize, I forgot what a puppy was like. <laughs> In a couple months, maybe we'll get sleep again. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Yes, Good Lorna. I, my sister raises and raises horses and it's been very lonely at the track. And of course we can't cheer, but uh, Sunday night, her horse won first in the first race. So as a family, we all watch on Zoom and we watch the horse race. And 
Papa's calling. All right. All right. So for, for those of for those who couldn't hear, uh, Lorna announced that her sister's horse won uh, first place in a horse race on on Sunday night. And it was watched by the whole family uh, via Zoom. So that's uh, that, that that's pretty cool. Um, all, I, I want to just add a little bit of happy bucks. Also, I see uh, Greg, Greg Bachheim is here. Uh, one of the things that my wife and my wife and I did over the weekend was we actually uh, strolled through the Virginia Zoo. So we had a wonderful time, and um, you know, it's uh, that is that is truly one of Norfolk's treasures, uh, along with uh, you know where we are, the Norfolk Botanical Garden. So uh, any other happy bucks? All right. So now I'm going to turn it over. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to turn it over to Lori Harrison. Okay. Okay, um, can they hear? Oh, whatever. Um, today's Rotarian of the Day is Michael Desplaines. Michael joined Rotary in 2014. Um, he loves ro what Rotary does around the world, and he had a chance to go to India in February of 2000 for a month as a group study exchange fellow through the Rotary Foundation. So cool. You should do it slideshow on that one day. Um, and a fun fact is that he spoke French before he spoke English. So we're looking forward to the presentation and Michael will introduce Joey and Seeger. Thanks. Thanks, Lori. So it's my pleasure to introduce our speakers today. Joey Rothgary, a native of Norfolk. She graduated from Norfolk Catholic High School. She went on to become a loyal Virginia Tech Hokie. After a 36 year career with the American Red Cross, she retired in 2011. She's been an active Norfolk master gardener with a special interest in trees. Uh, her compatriot on this journey, Seeger Whitaker, she's a native of Indianapolis. She has two degrees from UNC Chapel Hill. She retired also in 2011 as a senior vice president from SunTrust where she was a commercial banker I just, I find that so hard to believe, Seeger, like as a bank, you're such a nice person. How did you like get people to, when they wouldn't pay you back, to pay you back? The most important thing to know is before I was a banker, I was a social worker who took kids away from their children. Oh so God. <laughs> Got it. Cause she's so nice, right? Um, she, uh, she's a published author and we know that she's spoken to our clubs about books she's written in the past. She joined Rotary in August of 1999. She was club president in 2014. That's when I joined Rotary. So she was my first president. Um, she's our club's foundation chair and webmaster. Thank God, um, for the webmaster part. Um, on the district level, she's an assistant governor and she was the district conference chair. If you remember when our own John Paget was a district governor. Um, with that, I would like to introduce Joey and Seeger to share with you our amazing trip to Italy. So this trip started when, when I was, um, I got a thing from the Norfolk Botanical Garden saying, we've got this wonderful trip coming to Italy. And immediately without doing any kind of due diligence, which is outside the realm of a commercial banker, I said, I want to go, I want to go. So I sent out a message to three of my friends and said, anybody interested in this? And one of them, Pat, said that afternoon, yes, I want to go. So we signed up. About a week and a half later, a dear friend, Joan, called me and said, oh, I want to go to Italy with you. And it was like, I'm so sorry, I already have a roommate but let me see if we can find somebody. So we st I started looking and Joan was looking in the Dallas area where she lives without any success. And lo and behold, I said to myself, well, Joey Rothgary would be the perfect person to go with, with Joan because Joey's a master gardener. Joan loves to work in her garden and is active in the Herb Society in Dallas. So they put together and one day I knew Pat, I knew Joey, I knew Joan and the rest of them had no idea about anybody but me, but off we went on this wonderful adventure. So the next slide is of the group that was taken. Oh, I don't know what I do. Okay. 
Yeah. There, it goes. Okay, so this is the wonderful group. It was taken along the way, and we'll talk about the garden where we were that day later. Joey? We had a special request to make sure we included a couple maps so you would know exactly where we were. And Italy is comprised of 20 regions. The bulk of our trip was up here in the Lombardy region, which uh, is where Lake Como and the whole Lake District is located. And so we started there and spent most of the trip, but then we eventually traveled south uh, to Tuscany where um, where Florence and the towns around Florence are located that we visited. Um, part of the group went on to Rome, but, but uh, Sigur and I did not. Our trip concluded in Florence. And then here's just a quick look at uh, the Lake District and uh, this kind of uh, fork-shaped looking lake is Lake Como. And um, if you see these like green, they kind of blend in, but these green dots along the way, those are the various villas uh, and gardens that we stopped at that we'll talk a little bit more about. And of course our trip up here started in the town of Como itself. And then over here we have Lake uh, Maggiore and that's also has a lot of fabled uh, palaces and villas and we spent some time over there as well. And then our trip began. Oh, heading the wrong way. There we go. So our trip began in Milan. And I think when you think of Italy, you think of several things, one of which are cathedrals, otherwise in Italian known as domos. You think about shopping. You think about eating. You think about opera. And in Milan, we had a combination of all of them. On the top, you see the Duomo in Milan, which is quite a magnificent building. On the bottom, you see the Opera House. Um, one of the things that struck me, I had been with the Choir Christ in St. Luke's earlier in the summer in Paris and had a couple of extensive walking tours of Paris with an architect. And the thing that struck me was the parallel between the architecture in Milan and the architecture in Paris. And there was commonality in Napoleon Bonaparte. So he's the one responsible for the height of the six foot, six floor buildings and also all the tree shaded lanes. But you know, when we talk about fashion, we had to put in our picture of a piece of eye candy from Milano from the Armani store. He was very happy to, to um, let us take his picture. One of the things that I'm sure everybody wants to see if they go to Milan is the Last Supper. And we did see that in an old church and the church had been significantly bombed during World War II. And what was very impressive was how they were able to save the, the famous painting from any destruction by sandbags and that sort of thing. On the next picture, we have just a building that was in Milan with some old statuary on the outside of old men. And then on the right hand side is a picture of the last work of Michelangelo that was well underway when he left um, Milan. Then we ate very, very well. So these are some pictures from eating. And I want you to look at the waiter who is wearing Italian suspenders. When we left Milan, we traveled to um, Como. We didn't spend the night there, but we proceeded up uh, to a town along Lake Como that Sigur will tell you about shortly. But our first day we had the morning free. So the four of us, um, which the four of us became known as the Carolina girls, which uh, I did not object, although I was in a minority, so I didn't object, even though I'm a loyal hokey. Um, but we had the morning off and we so we took a water taxi or a ferry to the town of Chernobyl. 
And it's a, a small, rather quaint town, has a small shopping district, but it was just delightful to um, um, see, you know, what a, a small Italian town along Lake Homo is like. We spent a fair amount of time actually at the post office. Um, there are wonderful things to say about Italians and Italian food and Italian uh, art, but speed is not always one of their strong suits. Um, but we had a wonderful half day in Chernobyl. And then that same afternoon, we visited our first villa. And this is uh, Villa Carlotta. And uh, this is on the shores of Lake Como. It was built in the late 17th century by a Milanese nobleman. It passed hands several times to include the president of a Napoleonic Republic and also a Prussian princess. The government of Italy took it over during World War I. It has a very impressive collection in the museum buildings itself. Um, but of course, we were anxious to get out in the gardens. At least I was anxious to get out in the gardens. And we saw some beautiful, beautiful trees there and other plant materials. But being our first stop, all of a sudden we entered this huge, tremendous camellia garden. Of course, it wasn't blooming in September, but I'm thinking, why do I feel like I'm at home? You know. And this was the first realization that actually the, uh, the climate in this section of Italy is very similar to Virginia and is in fact the same hardiness zone, 8A. So over the course of our trip, it was you know, fascinating to see um, many Southern magnolias. We saw crepe myrtles and a number of plants that grow here as well. Beautiful vistas. Uh, from this, from this villa, absolutely beautiful. The section of the lake between this villa and where we were staying is another uh, well-known uh, residence that we passed on the water taxi, on the ferry. And that was uh, George Clooney's villa, which uh, for some reason, I always thought it was gonna be up high up in the hills looking over, but it's not, it sits right down on the lake and the, the everyday water taxi up and down Lake Como passes right by here. Um, so of course we had to enjoy that and we could pretend that we saw George, although we never did. Our next stop was at Bellagio and it's a lovely town. And I think that a lot of people that go to Lake Como have it on their list of places they have to go. And I would highly recommend it. Um, it is a very hilly town, as one would expect if you are in the Italian Alps. And I got to tell you, we walked six to eight miles a day. So if you were worried about us gathering, what, gaining weight, not to worry, we walked it all off. But here is a view of some uh, flowers and also of one of the um, street views. And then it has a little marina area. And so here's a picture of four of us. Um, my friend Joan is on the left and then Pamela from Florida is next to Joey and then me. And then here are four of us. The one in the orangey yellowish shirt is my friend Pat. And along the viewway in Bellagio, they had these lovely flowers and tree-lined streets. After we spent some time in the city of Bellagio, we actually went to the Villa Melzi Gardens, which was just a delightful place. It was very different than the first garden we went to in that it had more open space and more statuary out in the gardens. There was a lot of statuary inside the house at Villa Carlotta, but in the gardens here. Here's a picture I think you probably recognize Michael in the middle and there's a, on the left hand side is Jason and Joey. And one of the unique trees is the wedding cake tree, which is on the far right. And on the left hand side of her thing is um, an overhead view of the, of the garden, which was lovely. Here are two of the trees in the garden and one of the statues. And then some Italian sweets that we thoroughly enjoyed.
I forgot to mention when I was showing the map that any mountains or foothills that you see in these photographs are the Italian Alps, which are just, just north to this entire district. Um, our next stop was Villa Toronto, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, but uh, it, uh, Italian I did not pick up while I was there. Um, these were uh, botanical gardens. There's no villa or house to tour, but just beautiful, beautiful botanical gardens that are now, look, we're now have moved from Lake Como and these are located on the Western shore of Lake Maggiore. And these gardens were established in 1931 by a Scotsman. And he named it for uh, a relative or an ancestor of his who had been named the Duke of Toronto by Napoleon. And um, a lot of Scottish influence on these gardens. But I think, whoops, back to the sweets. Um, one of the most um, really breathtaking areas of this garden we, we hit on first, and that was just acres of dahlias. And uh, they were just, just breathtaking dahlias uh, gardens there. And I think you see the 18 of us huddling around with our cameras, taking pictures of <laughs> dahlias. It was a bit much, but it was really quite, uh, quite a treat. Uh, just numerous varieties. Um, I'm responsible for the tree shots in this presentation. Uh, I think like most people, I probably took a thousand photos, uh, almost probably 30% of them were food, 30% are trees, and then the remaining is the other general sites of the area. But there were some spectacular trees at these gardens. Um, it was, had some formal aspects to it and then some, um, native uh, woodland areas as well. And uh, we all love this. These are water lilies, but this particular variety is really the largest in the world. They're not native to Italy. They're from the uh, uh, tropical areas around the Amazon, but uh, they were just, just fabulous and were quite breathtaking. Uh, on the same day, right after this, we traveled to first to the town of Stressa, which is on Lake Maggiore, for lunch. And then we took a boat launch to the island of Isabella. And this is quite a phenomenal uh, site if you haven't, if you get to this part of Italy, it's certainly a must. The palace was started in the 1600s by Carlo III of the uh, Bronomia, Bron I had it in the car, I had it right. I'm not gonna to try to say it. A famous family in North Italy in honor of his wife, Isabella, that it's named after. Uh, the palace and the gardens are a treasure chest of Baroque art in particular, suspended over the, over the water. This like other places that we saw um, had were designated that Napoleon slept here. So a lot about Napoleon through our trip and he in fact slept here. The gardens were started in 1671. And one of the main features that was just uh, so striking was the lovely stonework, all done painstakingly by hand. We also saw a similar stonework at the Boboli Gardens in Florence and at the Villa Mazzoni that we'll, you'll hear about later. And here are just a few shots to show you. Um, the entire island is indeed the palace and the gardens, um, quite breathtaking, very formal in some, in most areas with, uh, this is looking down into the gardens um, and the two of us with some stonework. Um, there were white peacocks all just roaming loose all over the property. So um, a favorite photo shot, shot for just about everyone. And here's an example. This is like a, in the theater area, but this massive stone stonework at the end of the island uh, that we could all climbed up. And in fact, we did. And we're uh, at least halfway up that the three of us and I we do want to go on record that the three of us declared at a rotary meeting 
and we sang the first verse of R O T A R Y. The next stop was at the Villa Mazzoni, and that is where the picture of the group was from for the first shot that you saw. It's a lovely place. It the, it's, was has been owned by the same family since the 1400s, and the stale behind this is that one of the principles of Florence was up, or maybe it was Milan, was visiting, and he was attacked by a bear, and the family's hunting dog saved the count from the ultimate death that he was facing. So he gave the property to the family and they built this house. And it's, when you compare it to some of the other places that we saw, the house is not particularly grand, although it is certainly lovely in its own way. Family still lives there. The gardens were nice. And here are two of my, my favorite pictures. One is with Michael with the owner of the property and about a week later he got married. Um, and the one on the right hand side is Michael's mother with one of the waiters. This was at lunch. And a, a shot of the gardens on the left, a shot of lunch with at dinner time, at dessert time. And on the upper right hand corner is a picture of the ceiling. And then here is a cat. And I have to tell you, I think that somebody's just earned a fine. <laughs> anyway, um, a cat is on the lower right and Michael has a real aficionation with animals. You will see him pictured with a dog later, but he made friends with this cat also. And then we went on to Maltraso. Well, that was really the town in which we stayed. And we stayed at the Grand Hotel Imperial, which was lovely. Um, and here's a picture of four of us peeking over the um, sign outside of it. And on the far right, you'll see that we got photobombed by an Italian guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's some shots of the, of the town, which is on the water. And it goes, as most of these towns do, almost straight up the mountain. And then there was this long walk up the top, not to the total top of the hill, but far enough up that we decided to walk it. And when I say we, I'm talking Joey, me, and Michael's mother. So we had a lovely view at the top. And here's another view of the walk we walked up. And some sights that we saw along the way, um, a little stream coming down on the left. There was a kitten sitting on top of a motorcycle. And then there were the, the cemetery of Montrasso. So Michael has a, a thing about Versace and Versace was buried in this particular cemetery. So he and Jason are in the cemetery trying to find the gravesite of Versace. And meanwhile, Joey and I and Michael's mother are on top of the hill and he spots us and we wave down, hello, hello. And he sees us and thinks, oh my gosh, they're gonna get lost. So he starts his way up the mountain, up the opposite route. And meanwhile, we decide, well, it's time that we come down. So we wandered down the other way. So Michael's sitting there going, I lost my mother. How am I gonna do that? And what am I gonna tell our fellow Rotarians when I told them that I lost Sigur and Joey? But we weren't lost. We knew exactly where we were. And oh yes, we did find the, the grave site it had been in a family crypt, but it had actually been moved to the family property. So we saw it in the crypt there. And we enjoyed dining in Montrasso. On the bottom right is a picture of the four of us sitting there. Um, and this couple of these pictures, like the one on the bottom left, was I think from that dinner on that outdoor terrace where we had tr um, truffles, thank you. But Joey decided to strike out on her own and she ordered a fish dinner that was the special of the day that she asked for it to come with rice. Well, it came with potatoes. Well, she didn't order the one with potatoes. She ordered the one with rice. So the waiter was not very accommodating and said, 
eventually somebody else came over, would, would you like rice? Well, yeah, I would. So she got charged for the rice. <laughs> and then one of our favorite things in Mel Trasso was the four Coke bottles that we found at lunch one day. And if you look, and I'll take the example of the one from the left, which is Naples, you will see a pizza on the hat. So each of the, each of the different things had something that the town was famous for, such as Rome had the Colosseum. And once again, we had fabulous food when we were at Motrasso. And here are just some more pictures. And on the bottom right hand side is gelato, one of the famous things from Italy. From there we went, um, oh, here. so we proceed, we left Lake Como area and headed to uh, Florence. And this was one of the stops. We stopped at the town of Parma, which is of course famous for Parmesan cheese. But we also stopped and had a balsamic vinegar tasting, which I don't know that any of us had before. I've had olive oil tastings in Italy and we've all had wine tastings everywhere. So this was a first balsamic vinegar. And this was a family owned um, a business and had been in the family for generations. Um, and this was in the Modana or, uh, district between uh, Lombardy and Tuscany. And so this is the area of Italy that is known for fine balsamic vinegar. And indeed, I think I learned that there's what you buy in the grocery store and then there's the real stuff. And this is the real stuff. So we just had a marvelous time tasting and many of us purchasing the balsamic vinegar. Um, of course, this was, uh, this was, you know, I'm not a dog person, but this was a, this was a wonderful dog. Right, yeah. <laughs> and so Michael, uh, he bonded with Michael. So we had, we had a lot of fun, uh, this particular stop. And then we took, um, a day trip, uh, out of, uh, Florence and, uh, Luca, it was a delightful town. It's like kind of due west, a little northwest of Florence. Um, this is one of the town squares. And then here, these are, aren't these wonderful columns that are uh, on the uh, St. Martin's Cathedral right in the town square. And again, some beautiful trees in Luca as well. We, um, there was a, a kind of a, you know, you've seen jugglers or street uh, entertainers. Well, we had a bubbler. And so he was delighting the, the kids and adults alike. It was starting to rain a little bit, but he just had filled up the square with these beautiful, beautiful bubbles. Oops. Just a couple of residences. It was a charming town, small, windy little streets, beautiful homes in shops, um, we had a delightful lunch in a big, it was like an arena area that had, it was the Italian version of a food court, uh, but it was just, just charming. As we were leaving town, we were walking through some small, these small streets heading back to our bus and our tour guide pulled me over, his name was Massimo. He pulled me over to this food market and he pointed out these uh, zucchini blossoms, fresh zucchini blossoms in this market. And he was telling me that, you know, that they're in season, you know, and this was a wonderful local dish. And I thought, wow, I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm sheltered. I'd never heard of eating zucchini blossoms, but had to take a photo of it. Well, lo and behold, at dinner that night, a wonderful restaurant that the hotel recommended in Florence, um, what was on the menu? Fried zucchini blossoms. So this was our del delightful dish and it was just wonderful. And it was so, so great to have that served the same day that we'd seen it in the market. From Luca, we stopped at Villa Real. Real. And this is uh, not far from Luca. Um, it was purchased in 1806 by Napoleon Bonaparte's sister, Eliza Bonaparte. 
and it was her official residence well, when she was the Duchess of Lucca, she was Grand Duchess of Tuscany and was uh, truly considered a, a really admirable leader. She was noted for her management leadership style and was in fact the governor of Tuscany during this era. Um, just have a few photos here, but really extensive grounds. We spent quite a lot of time just walking around on the grounds. Uh, the, the residence is being restored. And so we did poke in there for a few minutes, but mainly just um, on the grounds. Delightful, delightful trip. Yet more food. So one night we had the Florence specialty, which is basically steak in the style of Florence. And the steak you see on the left, upper left-hand corner, it was huge. It was like, five pounds of steak for four gals. But not only did we get the steak, but we got the salad on the far right. We've got the pasta on the upper right. And then we had breadsticks on the lower left and um, dessert on the lower right. It was, it was a fabulous meal, but well over the top. I think I can say I've done it once and that will be it. We intentionally did not include pictures of Florence in this presentation. The day was not the best of days. Um, it was misty, overcast, and we spent an awful lot of time walking through the streets of um, Florence and we you know, went to the famous Boboli Gardens. And if any of you have not been there, it's a sight worth seeing, but we made the decision not to include that in the film. So, the last day we were in town, we wanted to do something different. And by we, I mean the four girls. And so we asked the guy at the hotel, well, what would you recommend? And he would say, well, I think you have to go see the Boba Lee Gardens. No, we've already been there. Well, I think you need to do this. No, we've been there. And so he finally said, you know, there's this little town a short distance outside of Florence by the name of Fiasole. And you could go there. And we said, okay. So we took a cab and it was on and out. It's basically a suburb, but it's up in the hills. And we had a delightful time. There's Joey and me. And we had lunch at a little restaurant, which overlooked this garden, which had a little stage in it. And this was in the town square. The sculpture on the right hand side is of Garibaldi and Vittorio Emanuele. And Garibaldi is credited with the unification of Italy while Vittorio Emanuele was the king of Sardonia and became the first king of the United Italy. And this was on our walk up the hill, um, which was quite a substantial walk, but we went up to basically an old monastery, which was lovely and the views were tremendous. And if you look at the right hand side, down below is Florence. That night we went to our final dinner, which was at a, a winery and we went to Griev and Chianti. And so on the left hand side, you see the group gathered for dinner. On the right hand side is me and Joey on the far right lower part is their um, sign outside. And in the middle is Michael and Jason and his mother. And I want to call attention to Michael's outfit. Now I mentioned early on that we that he had to chase the graveside of Versace. Well, he also happens to love Gucci. In fact, Michael is quite the shopper. You probably don't know this, but we do that he oftentimes will take an empty suitcase on trips and fill it up. So he was busy shopping as we were visiting, touring. He did tour with us mainly, but in our free time, we knew where we could find him. So he is all dressed up in his Gucci outfit. And with that, we said goodbye to our lovely group, wished them arrivederci. Y'all have any questions? Were those uh, um, magnolias and 
large botanical gardens certainly had specimens that we're not accustomed to, just like our Norfolk Botanical Garden has tree specimens that don't grow uh, commonly, you know, in the region. Um, but so much of the plant material, and especially what was blooming, because it was September, so it wasn't like spring, we expected to have a profusion of color, but there was plenty of color. Mm -hmm. And, um, and a lot of what we saw was, was familiar, but these, some of the trees that uh, were specimens in these botanical gardens were quite spectacular. And of course the age on them, they were, were older trees than maybe what we would see here in the US in a botanical garden. Any questions from Zoom World? I don't see any. Any questions for the people on Zoom? Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Joey and Sigur. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, given that our club is, is very interested in um, literacy, uh, a book will be uh, presented to Chesterfield Academy uh, commemorating your, your, spe your, your speech with us uh, um, today. Um, with that, uh, our next meeting will be uh, next uh, Tuesday, October 13th. It will be a Zoom meeting, um, so you'll be getting an invitation for that. Our speaker will be Tina Gill, uh, the president and CEO of the UP Center. Also wanted to let folks know uh, that our next board meeting will be uh, next Monday, the 12th. Um, so if you're interested in attending, um, just, just let me know. With that, uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you for joining us both in person and on Zoom. Um, I hope this, um, this was a, a good way for us to do this and, um, and we'll, we'll see about putting it together again. So thank you and we are adjourned. Thank you.